After completing this chapter, the learner will be aware of the reasons for the MARPOL Convention, be aware of the five main types of pollution in the marine environment and why these have become an increasing problem during the 20th century, be aware that there are requirements for survey and certification under MARPOL, know what MARPOL means by a pollution incident, and be aware of the requirements to report pollution incidents. During the 20th century, there was increasing marine pollution as the number of ships and their size increased. The pollution of most concern was oil. Its increasing transport as cargo led to routine operational pollution as cargo tanks were cleaned out. Public concern about oily beaches resulted in a number of international conferences, which finally led to the adoption of the Oil Pol Convention in 1954. Twenty years later, the Oil Pol Convention was considered to need replacement for several reasons. Most notably, Oil Pol was voluntary and contained weak enforcement powers. Several tanker accidents had occurred, resulting in serious pollution, notably the Torrey Canyon. When MARPOL was introduced, it had five annexes, each covering one source of pollution. Only annexes 1 and 2 were mandatory. Growing worldwide recognition of the problems caused by the other types of pollution has gradually led to the voluntary annexes becoming mandatory, and a sixth annex being added. There are five main types of pollution in the marine environment. Oil pollution, chemical pollution, sewage pollution, garbage pollution, and air pollution. Oil became increasingly popular as a fuel and as a raw material for chemical plants during the 20th century, with much of it transported by ships. The cargo oil tanks were routinely washed out with water between cargoes and the oily mixture was pumped overboard. Oil tankers grew ever larger, so pollution following collisions, groundings and the like became more damaging. Chemical pollution of the sea had become a problem by the 1970s because the increasing volumes of chemicals being used required their carriage by ship, both in bulk and in packaged form. Some of these cargoes entered the sea following accidents or as routine operational pollution after tank cleaning. Sewage pollution from ships became a problem as improved sewage treatment ashore made sewage from ships more obvious. Passenger ships grew in size and produced larger, more noticeable volumes of sewage, especially when moored or anchored. Garbage in the sea became a real problem due to the combined effects of increasing volumes from land and ship sources and an increasing proportion of plastic, which takes much longer to break down in the environment. Since Marpol was first written, research has shown that some gases can damage the environment ashore and the global climate. Again, as pollution sources ashore became more regulated, pollution from ships became more obvious and eventually regulated. Some MARPOL annexes require ships to be surveyed and issued with certificates. This is mainly because the previous anti-pollution convention was considered to have failed due to lack of enforcement, but also because compliance with some MARPOL rules cannot easily be proven while the ship is in service. A certificate can show compliance has been checked. Apart from MARPOL surveys, your ship may be subject to port state or flag state inspections between surveys to ensure that the rules continue to be complied with. In MARPOL, a pollution incident is defined as a discharge or probable discharge above the MARPOL permitted levels. MARPOL requires pollution incidents to be reported so that action can be taken to clean up the pollution. To MARPOL Annex 1, know the goals of MARPOL Annex 1, know what the term oil means according to Annex 1, be aware of the effects of oil in the sea, be aware of the kind of operational discharges of oily mixtures that are allowed from all ships and the restrictions placed on them, be aware that Annex 1 defines special areas, be aware of the kind of accidental discharges of oil or oily mixtures that may occur from all ships and the measures in place to minimize them. 
Be aware of what should be done to minimize the environmental damage caused following oil pollution of the water after an oil spill from a ship. The main goal of Marpol Annex 1 is to reduce the harm to the environment resulting from oil pollution from ships. Annex 1 of Marpol defines oil as oil coming from petroleum, not plants. Plant oils are considered as Annex 2 chemicals. Biofuels made from blends of petroleum and plant oils may come under Annex 1 or 2, depending on the blend. When oil from petroleum gets in the sea, it causes harm by acting as a poison, physically damaging life by coating it or blocking the sunlight. Ships of any type may make operational discharges of oil. For example, discharges of oily bilge water, mainly those from machinery spaces, or discharges of water ballast carried in fuel tanks. Let us now look at the restrictions Annex 1 places on these in more detail. Some important restrictions depend on whether the ship is inside or outside one of the areas which Annex 1 identifies as special areas. An area is declared as a special area where, for reasons of its nature and its sea traffic, special protection is required. The special areas are listed in the current edition of MAPO. Discharges of oily bilge water are not allowed unless oil filtering equipment is used. This is commonly known as a bilge separator or oily water separator. On large ships, an oil content meter, alarm and automatic stop system must be used at all times. Two sets of criteria to be met are listed in Annex 1, dependent on whether the ship is inside or outside a special area. The only difference is that discharges can only be made inside special areas if an oil content meter, alarm and automatic stop system is in use. The Antarctic is an extra special area. Discharge of oil or an oily mixture into the sea is banned while inside the Antarctic. Ships are not usually allowed to carry ballast in fuel tanks, but on some types of ships, such as long-distance tugs, it is unavoidable. Special conditions are applied before discharge of oily ballast is allowed. Oily water separators do not get rid of the oil, they only separate it from the water before the water is discharged overboard. The oil residues separated off must be collected and retain on board in a sludge tank until it can be disposed of ashore or by other approved means, such as burning in an incinerator or the ship's boiler. In exchange for cleaner seas and beaches, the states which have signed the convention are required to provide reception facilities for the oily mixtures that ships are banned from discharging into the sea. To make discharge ashore easier, each ship must have a pipe to deck with a standard discharge connection available. Ships certified under MARPOL Annex 1 must carry an oil record book, Part 1, Machinery Space Operations. The record book contains a list of the operations to be recorded and the codes to use when making entries. We all know that accidents can happen, and Annex 1 tries to prepare for accidental discharges of oil from a ship. These include accidental discharges during oil transfer operations, following equipment failures, following collision or grounding. Let us now look at how Annex 1 tries to deal with these in more detail. Spills may occur at any time during oil transfer operations, from leaky hoses, pipelines and connections, or tanks may overflow. These kinds of spills will frequently occur on the deck of a ship, allowing some chance of cleanup before the sea becomes polluted. Although MARPOL does not require a deck edge designed to retain oil, ships certified under MARPOL Annex 1 must have a Shipboard Oil Pollution Emergency Plan, or SOPEP. The SOPEP will contain shore contact details, so the master can make a report if there has been or is likely to be an oil spill. In addition, the SOPEP should provide a detailed description of the actions to be taken immediately by persons on board to reduce or control the discharge of oil following any of the types of incident mentioned above. On most ships, special oil cleanup equipment will have been supplied and its location recorded in the plan. The crew should have carried out training and drills to improve crew response to a spill. Should a routine discharge of oil be made which is found to be illegal, for example, the oil content alarm has failed to sound, or the discharge from the separator has not automatically stopped, the discharge should be stopped as soon as the failure is noticed. 
A responsible officer must be informed so that reporting and clean-up procedures can be put into operation immediately. Again, the SOPEP may contain useful guidance. Most ships are not allowed to carry oil in four peak tanks, where it is most exposed to damage and leakage in the event of a collision or grounding. To limit bunker spills from new ships following collision or grounding, their fuel tanks are required to be positioned away from the hull. The carriage of heavy oils in the Antarctic area is now banned due to the difficulty of cleaning them up in cold conditions and the remoteness of the area. The first response is usually to try to contain the oil. This prevents widespread damage and makes it easier to remove using physical means such as absorbents, brooms, spades or vacuum skimmers. The use of inappropriate chemical dispersants can cause worse pollution than the oil alone. It is often the case that the local government's permission is required before they are used.